Hello, my name is Kate Crowley. I'm on the faculty in the program of Communication Sciences and Disorders at Teachers College, Columbia University. I have created these video modules with my co-author, Georgia Duan. Welcome to Module 3 of Differential Diagnosis in Preschool Evaluations, a Case Study. In this module, we are going to look at the second part of the parent interview. Let us revisit the critical questions. Developmental milestones, especially gross motor and speech and language milestones, significant medical history, parent concerns, reliability of informant, prior special ed services, prior education, and hearing status. Here is more of the parent interview. Let's just go to some of the basic stuff. Developmental milestones, when did he first start to, you know, sit up, roll over, da, 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 walk, that kind of thing. Were they with a normal image? Uh, pretty much, yeah. yeah. He walked at 12 months. Yeah. It was like a week after his birthday. Yeah. The rolling over, I don't remember the exact but months. you weren't yeah, worried? No, so. not at all. And what about his first words? Well, that was first concerning. word was agua. Agua. And, and that was, like, I remember him babbling. It was like eight months. Uh -huh. So he was doing battling at the right time, right? Um, it's just, it was never a lot. And yeah. It was never like, you know, varying sounds or changing it up. It was always mum, 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 yeah. mum. And I became mum, mum. And yes. then my husband came, became dad, dad. And he couldn't yeah. say Bella or uh, Abuela or Abuelito uh -huh. for the longest time. So he called her Bella. And now, well, probably he still calls her Bella because that's her name, Habits. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how about you? He calls me mommy. Mommy. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy, daddy. Daddy, yeah. 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 That was the, it was like interesting because it was the first session that he had with the speech therapist. She just gave him a prompt to open mm -hmm. his mouth mm -hmm. and then the whole way home he's mommy, oh, daddy, she... really exaggerated, but he was doing it all by himself yeah. after that. Yeah, it's yeah, almost yeah. like, oh, yeah, I can I do that. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, any medical issues or? He was a preemie. Yeah. He was born at 33 and a half weeks. Um, he stayed in the NICU for a week, just until he turned mm -hmm. 35 weeks. He was a good weight, um, so it was really just, they wanted to wait till he was 35 weeks to clear him. He was jaundiced. He was jaundiced, yeah. Um, but there was really nothing, no, no feeding deal. issues that we saw. I breastfed for the first two months, if I recall mm -hmm. correctly, but he had a protein allergy. Um, uh -huh. um, so... It became really difficult for me to continue breastfeeding yeah. while changing my diet. I was sure. never able to produce enough milk for him. It was yeah. always a struggle. I was yeah. feeding him constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I had to give him um, formula. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. he went from, I mean, we tried so many different formulas. They even tried, what's the one that's the specialized formula that they use? Um, I mean, Ella Care. Uh -huh, yeah. And he hated it because yeah. it was irritated his GERD so bad. So then we went back to the... He's got GERD? He had it when he was oh. a baby. They gave him... Was that related to the allergy, do you think? I don't know. Don't know. Okay. They gave him Zantac when he was a baby. Everything pretty much resolved itself by one. That's good. But he was colicky. Oh, he's a mess in the Thank beginning. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we talked about your concerns. Reliability. Extremely reliable. Yeah. <laughs> woman. Um, prior services. So he's gotten speech therapy how often a week? Twice a week. Twice a week since March. Since March. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and they come to the house? No, we take them to an agency. And you think it's a good speech therapist? She's wonderful. Yeah. Good. She's not bilingual, so when it yeah. comes to that, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She'll look things up, but That's good. she's wonderful. We start here with developmental milestones. I tried to get specific months from the mom because she was so reliable. When she let me know she had no concerns about the developmental milestones, I felt very comfortable. She let me know he was babbling at eight months and his first words happened at 12 months. That's clearly within normal limits. But she did have a sophisticated observation that he did not babble a lot and he did not vary his sounds that much. I thought that this was very interesting and included that in the paragraph on developmental milestones in the background information section. Background information.
Developmental milestones were within normal limits. He walked at 12 months, and though the mother did not remember other motor milestones, she said she was not concerned and she felt they were all within normal limits. The mother indicated that he is not a clumsy child and is well coordinated. Speech developed milestones were within normal limits, babbling at eight to nine months, first word around one year, but two word combinations were a bit late at 24 months. The mother indicated that the babbling and the development of vocabulary were not robust. The other thing that tells me a lot about him from her observations is that he called her mamum and dad, dadum. He had one speech therapy session where the speech therapist used the prompt techniques to show him how to draw back his mouth to do the E, and he learned it and practiced it himself all the way home to get it right. All by himself. Very interesting. So he went from dadum to daddy, but he was the one doing all the work. So that tells me about his personality and also tells me that he may be a child who modifies his language if he feels he is not doing it right. This also shows that he has a metalinguistic interest in producing correct speech and that he is a bright boy with good problem-solving skills. We also found out about some interesting medical issues which are written about in the evaluation. Significant medical history. Alex was born premature at 33 and a half weeks of gestation. He was born jaundiced, and because he was premature, he remained in the neonatal intensive care clinic for about a week and a half after birth. Alex was colic as a baby for about three weeks. He had a protein allergy and reflux, both of which resolved themselves. We include a comment about the reliability of the mother at the beginning of the evaluation. We always make a statement on my judgment of the parent's reliability, including if we felt we could or could not comfortably rely on the information the parent provided. In this evaluation, we write that we felt the mother was an extremely reliable informant. We were lucky to have a parent who had a master's degree in school psychology with 14 years working with preschoolers with disabilities, and it was so attuned to her own child's strengths and challenges. And now, the final portion of the parent interview. He started school in September, and how's he doing in school? I know you talked a little bit about him not being willing to talk that much, but how's he doing in school? Uh, so I'm not really talking about academically, mm -hmm. but first, like with the peers. He's very interested. Yeah. They all say that he loves being with them, but he's having a hard time. He doesn't communicate with them. He mm -hmm. won't talk to them. He'll just grab or snatch or push. Okay out of excitement. They all tell me it's not out of aggression. No. Um, and he has a hard time staying on task. So yeah. he likes, I mean, he calls it self-directed. He jumps from one thing to the other. And, you know, when he's sitting in circle, he'll start nudging his friend or he's even tried to bite him or yeah. her or... So all physical things instead yeah. of using language. And even when they observed him for the CPSC evals, they all said he was playing, yeah. no language during play. Um, the same thing with his peers, he would just go up to them and look at them. Very simple things, I guess he would say, but if they asked him a question, but not much spontaneous. He's very interested in what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Always. <laughs> okay, and hearing, uh, hearing, does he have his hearing test? He yeah. did when they started the speech evals. And ha everything and was fine. fine. Yeah. Has he had a hear, hear infection? He or? recently had yeah. an ear infection, maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah. It was his first. Okay, so, and it resolved itself with antibiotics? Antibiotic, or yeah, it was really bad. He had been sick for some time. He got sick when he first started school, and I guess it just went into a new infection. Let's see, is there any? I think we're good. Is there anything else you want to tell me? So, I, I love that, that you want to tell me that I don't know you. Like, just knowing him, the brief moment that I've known him, I'm surprised that he hasn't talked much in school. Yeah. Because he's got so much language. So are my husband and I. When we right? see him even in the waiting area and there's other kids. But you can see almost like a shyness to yeah, him in yeah, that sense. Yeah. But it's not like a selective speaker. It's No, no, no. Yeah. I don't know if it's a confidence issue. And it's just he's just he's just you've just been in school for about a month and a half, right? And initially he started only three half days. Now uh -huh. because we were seeing that he was having a hard time, we put him in five days just okay. to help with the continuity. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's talk about her description of what happens in school, where he does stay on task, 
He plays well, but he does not use language. He bites or nudges his friend and is physical rather than verbal. Even when he's playing, they don't see much language. That's all consistent with what the mom told me before. We have a little more information about Dadam to Dadi and his motivation to practice speech sounds on the way home tells me he has this metalinguistic understanding and possible hesitancy because he knows he has more difficulty being understood. This information will be important as we analyze all the data in the evaluation. At this point, we have most of the preschool information that we put in the background information section. As we saw, some of the information goes in the language background and use section. Our job as evaluators is to gather information and determine how to write the evaluation in a way that makes the most sense for the particular child we are evaluating. We'll talk about this more in Module 9, putting it all together in the written evaluation report. Hearing is very important for all children, but a full audiological evaluation is mandatory for a child with speech and language delays. We want to follow up about hearing status because what he is going through could be attributed to conductive hearing losses or a sensory neural hearing loss. It is very important to rule that out, which has already been done in this case. So we have asked the critical questions, but we also want to ask, is there anything else you want, would like to tell me? This is an important part of the evaluation. We are not just listening to the parent during the interview, we are engaging in a problem-solving process with the parent. We know from the research that the parent is the most valuable player in the evaluation in terms of gathering information. Our primary role is to know what kind of information to gather and how to ask it and how to probe beyond that. The parent has the information we need. We cannot do a quality evaluation without the parent. We learned in the parent interview that Alex had had private speech therapy for seven months prior to this evaluation. We reviewed his evaluations and IEP goals, but often we find that a child's communication notebook can be very revealing. After reviewing Alex's communication notebook, I noticed that he was working on sounds that were not age appropriate and his case was being treated as an articulation case. At this point, he's two years, 10 months old, and they are having him work on the L sound and SP blends. In addition, I read that they were doing non-speech oral motor exercises with the lips, protruding the tongue, and jaw coordination exercises. During the evaluation, we don't notice any disassociation of the jaw, and as we discussed in module one, why an accurate differential diagnosis matters, the research shows that non-speech oral motor exercises do not generalize to speech. Even though Alex has had private speech therapy for seven months from March through October, and this is a child who needs support and evidence-based help, the problems he had were not being addressed. Because this is so concerning, we definitely want to address this in the write-up. Speech language development and prior services. A review of Alex's notebook on what he works on with his speech language pathologist is concerning. While he is not yet three years old, the SLP is working on production of sounds that would not be considered delayed until several years later. For example, she is working with L, Alex on acquiring the L and SP blends. In addition, many of the pages focus on non-speech oral motor exercises, such as pursing the lips, protruding the tongue, and coordinating the jaw. His communication notebook reveals that the SLP has not provided support for Alex's speech and language delays in an evidence-informed approach. Based on a review of the communication notebook from the SLP, it is unlikely that Alex has received any useful services to address the delays that he has. In this module, we learn from the mother a very reliable informant that her son's communication dif difficulties manifest as nonverbal behaviors like pushing and grabbing in order to engage with peers in his preschool. We also discovered that this child has likely not received appropriate or useful speech services to address the delays he has. Let's turn to the child and listen to Alex's receptive and expressive language in the next modules.